In this tutorial, we're going to be learning how to swap transforms at runtime. Note that this will not work for static objects. In our example, we're going to be using a few different assets, including our favorite first-person controller, the Greek Temple Vases, and Desert Set House by Crazy Cool. The first thing that we're going to do is create a new c -sharp script, and we're going to call it Transform Swap. Open that up in Visual Studio, and then the first thing we're going to do inside of the script is make a public list of transforms, and we're going to call it Targets. Then we're going to go beneath that and make a public bool called swap on awake and change our void start to void awake. Then go beneath our update function and make a new public void, call it swap transforms. And then we're going to go back into our awake function and we're going to say if swap on awake is equal to true, then we're going to execute our swap transform function. Now we need a for loop inside of our swap transform function, which as usual, I grabbed off the internet. And we're going to make our for loop run through targets.count. Inside of the for loop, we're going to say vector3 last position equals targets at position i dot position. Above that, make an int, call it where to, and make it equal to random dot range. And then for the min value, we're going to say zero. And for the max value, we're going to say targets dot count. Then we're going to go beneath that and say targets at position i dot position is equal to targets at position where to dot position. Finally, for this function, we're going to say targets at position where to dot position is equal to last position. Then in our update function, we're going to say if input dot get key down key code s for swap, we're going to execute our swap transform function. Going back into our editor, you can see that we have three vases. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new empty game object and we're going to call it swap vases. We're going to make it a child object of the first vase, reset its transform so it's in the same exact spot as the first vase, just for simplicity. And then we're going to make the three vases child objects of the swap vases game object. After that, we're going to put the transform swap script onto our swap vases object. And then we're going to lock this game object, and then we're going to highlight the three vases that are child objects, and we're going to put it under targets. And then we're going to hit swap on awake and see if this works. And as you can see, it works perfectly. And as we continue to click S, you can see that it continues to transform to different positions. Now, nine times out of 10, we're also gonna to wanna to change the rotation of the objects as well. And that's just because the rotation of a single object probably doesn't fit in other places, as you can see here. So we'll go back into our script, into our swap transform function, and we'll go beneath the vector three last position, and we'll make a vector three last Eulier angle make it equal to targets at position i dot Eulier angles. Then skip the next line and say targets at position i dot Eulier angles is equal to targets at position where to dot Eulier angles. Go at the bottom and say targets at position where to dot Eulier angles is equal to last Eulier angles. And that should be it. So let's go ahead and save that and check this out in play mode. And there you go. Every game object that comes here will retain the entirety of the transform, minus the scale, which you really don't want. All right, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. We try to answer as many as possible, and we'll see you next time.